Council meeting for September 20th, 2021 at seven o'clock. All council members are present. We have a big honor tonight, and uh, I know that you're all here to talk about the gas station or something like that, right? But we have American Heritage Girls Troop, uh, Colorado 1728. Is that correct? All right. If Ladies, if you all want to come down, and of course, if you have brothers here, they can come down too, and uh, they're going to lead us in tonight's Pledge of Allegiance. So we'll wait for them to assemble and ask us to stand and all the good stuff. Everybody beats him to the punch. I know. Delsa, stand up. Can you guys stand up? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> They're rule breakers out there. We're not. We're trying to follow along. Right? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, don't go back to your seats yet. We got to get a picture with you guys because we haven't had this many Girl Scouts and a brother in the whole room. So we'll get everybody up here knows where. The net would you mind? Handsome dudes. <laughs> I'll go find some for you. <laughs> I gotta make sure I'm taller than at least one or two other girls. Almost, almost. I almost. Almost. wanna do a little squishing so we can get everybody in. We don't know. All right. Okay. I wore my red tie this week. Oh, yeah. Scan the whole audience. Yeah. Over here? Okay. Yep. That's great. One more. One more? Yeah. You didn't know you guys were in a photo shoot. Laura's not getting this out. It's a photo op. All right, next up on our agenda is public comment. Public comments are taken three ways. One, in the room, um, by coming up to the podium and stating your name and address. Second is by email to the town clerk's office at five o'clock before the meeting. And we have received one such from Stephanie Jewett. And lastly is over Zoom. So I don't know if we have anybody in the room wishing to make public comment. Seeing none, Did I, do we have anybody on Zoom? If you would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand in Zoom. No comments. Okay, then we'll move it out of that period. Next is reports, items, and comments from Mayor and Council. I think I'll start to my right, Councilman Rivero. Um, going to CML this week. Um, fairly excited about that. It's my first one. Um, so excited to get to know everybody and uh, learn a little bit and, uh, and uh, looking forward to uh, you know, a little, little convention on civics, if you will. Um, and then, uh, other than that, uh, had a water meeting, um, um, very good um, direction. We are uh, continuing to work to improve the streams and stormwater facilities um, in and around the area, in Parker and regionally. So, very good meeting. Great. Yeah, sure. I've only really had one meeting, and that was with the Greater Parker Foundation, and we're looking at some, some goal setting as we're getting ready for the new phase of this organization's life. Councilmember Hendricks. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, 
as part of my liaison board uh, duties, I met with Parker Senior Center. They have a grand reopening this Thursday, I believe. Um, also, along with Council Member Barrington, we interviewed a couple of candidates at the, for the Parker Cultural and Scientific Commission last week. Um, attended CASC's Oktoberfest, which was a great time. And uh, Legend High School, my, my oldest uh, child goes there. So homecoming week, uh, attended uh, the football game on Friday, had a little parade, chucking candy at kids, and um, that was a lot of fun. And on a personal note, I was, uh, for Legend High School, I was selected to be a voting member on the school accountability committee, so. Excellent, congratulations. Thank you. Excellent. That's it. And the town attorney has asked me to confirm we did not chuck it, we simply tossed it. <laughs> Heavily. <laughs> Councilmember Dyack. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I have a few. Uh, E470 uh, has a transportation safety foundation. What it does, it tries to raise uh, money for programs such as child safety seat inspections, seatbelt safety, driver's education classes, and high school after prom support. Uh, that happened the last week of August. Um, they raised about $70,000. So anybody out there with uh, PTOs looking for high school after prom support, um, look up E470 Safety Foundation. Uh, next item, uh, E470 had a board retreat uh, on September 8th. Uh, we talked about uh, a, a number of things, uh, board orientation and collaboration. Uh, we also talked about process, uh, processes of procurement, um, always a very enjoyable task to go over. Uh, we then had a board meeting on the 9th uh, where we, um, we awarded an advertising agency contract. Uh, after that, I had a meeting with Executive Director Shoshana Liu and E470 Executive Committee um, Chair Chaz Tedesco, uh, just as a, as a brief check-in. Um, let's see here, 9-11, uh, it was, um, it was a, a, a very um, great, uh, great time, as great as it can be. Um, we had an O'Brien 9-11 um, gathering where some citizens um, Put, put together a flag ceremony, very, um, very unbelievable. Uh, we also had a 9-11 flag of honor uh, across America memorial ceremony, which uh, more than a few of us attended. I'll let the mayor kind of uh, follow through with that. Uh, on uh, the 15th, uh, we had a partnership of Douglas County uh, meeting, uh, dealt with largely transportation. Council member Rivera and myself attended. Uh, we, I had a Dr. Cog board meeting uh, it was continuing discussion on the greenhouse gas emissions from a regional standpoint. Uh, that went the largely all night, <laughs> and and we uh, after uh, after that item we uh, we recessed and and uh, pushed the other items to a future meeting. Uh, on the 16th, I attended uh, the John Driscoll Hopkins uh, concert at the Pace Center. That was, I think, one of our first uh, national music events there for for the for the season. And uh, today, I attended the E-470 back office project kickoff meeting. Um, E-470 is rewriting their back office software for the first time in about 15 years. And uh, a, a few of us board members went to, um, to take in the uh, kickoff meeting. That was all, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Barrington. Yeah, it's been a busy couple weeks. Uh, September 9th is part of the Douglas County Housing Partnership. I attended a new construction tour of the Oakwood 2, which is a beautiful three-story building that's going to add an additional 53 units for seniors with uh, lower incomes. And we were originally thinking that it was going to be opening in January, but it looks like it could open a little bit early if all goes well. And uh, Saturday, I also attended the 9-11 the event at O'Brien Park and then the 9-11 Memorial Flag Ceremony along with several other council members and I'll let the mayor tell you about that, but it's very touching. And then Wednesday, yep, the, the, the homecoming parade, we were all <laughs> not chucking candy. <laughs> we were tossing, lightly tossing. And uh, we handed out a ton and we still ran out. Um, with the help of uh, Council Member Hefta's sons. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it was very interesting going to the uh, interviews for the, for the commissioner positions, and there was two really great candidates, and we look forward to uh, them 
getting some new um, appointees here in, in October. And then also this week, starting tomorrow, I'll be attending the CML conference, and it's going to go through Friday. So it's going to be a busy week. Excellent. Council Member Hefta. Yeah, I, I, we really had a, a great time to connect as it, with the council this past week, especially starting with the 9-11 memorial. Uh, we were able to come together to honor uh, the 9-11 memorial victims and families uh, at both the town and O'Brien Park. Um, I had a chance to sit down with the T.J. Sullivan and Tierney and Bill at the Parker Chamber of Commerce. Just get to get to know T.J. Sullivan, our new Parker Chamber of Commerce director, a little bit better. Uh, I also took my family to the Oktoberfest downtown um, and had a chance to um, coordinate with the mayor and get on stage and, and watch him uh, say a few words to greet the crowd that Friday evening. Uh, again, uh, we partnered um, some, some town council members, um, council member Hendricks and Barrington, myself and the mayor. Uh, we also saw um, council member Josh Rivero there. We missed John Dyack and council member Polk <laughs> at, the high, <laughs> at the high school legend parade. And I am guilty of tossing too much candy um, to the crowd early on. <laughs> um, on a, uh, I'm also gonna attend the CML conference online in the next couple of weeks. That's a two day conference uh, put on by the Colorado Municipal League. And um, as Council Member Hendricks says, uh, always do something fun for the town with Council Member Dyack and I attended Black Iris Cirque at the Pace Center and it was wonderful. I highly recommend if you haven't seen a, a variety show of, of talent and singing that you uh, check this out in the future. They were, the singing and the, and the acrobats were, that was fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. It has been a busy week. And just a couple of notes for me. Uh, the 9-11 uh, memorial flag ceremony was sponsored by our teen court. They were one of 50 organizations, one of 100 organizations chosen across the country. They read 10 names of the fallen um, from 9-11. It, it was a very emotional, moving, and they did such a great job. But I think one of the things that I took away from that is these are young people that this is history to them. They weren't there, um, and they were in a room full of folks that were there. And uh, you know, we had everybody from uh, South Metro 41 came over. Um, certainly our chief of police was there. There, as well as the Disabled American Veterans Organization. So it was an excellent, excellent um, event. And then we did the Legend um, Homecoming. Special thanks to Chuck Quarter for the use of the big red fire truck that was amazing. And uh, I think we all learned we need significantly more candy next year when we do it. Um, but lastly, just a couple of upcoming activities. We have the first Mayor's Day of Service happening on Saturday. So at 9 o'clock, we're going to kick it off at O'Brien Park. And then we're going to hit the trails. And uh, Mary Colton's out there. She's ready for her trails to be beautified and um, cleaned of all trash. So I think we're going to go um, a few hours. Um, you can check that out on my Facebook page, and certainly on um, Sean Gann. So a lot of good information out there. We also have happening downtown the, S Soci the Santa Society reunion, Society of Santa's reunion. And that's happening at 11 o'clock at uh, uh, Parker Station. And we'll have a ton of Santas running around downtown. So don't call the police if they're Santas. It's on the up and up. And then I'll also be out in Aurora um, later on that afternoon um, for our uh, Heroes Fest. Um, speaking about our Parker PD and, and all those people in Parker that make it special. So big activities happening. And I'll be at CML with Josh and Ann as well. So it's a big, big week. All right. Let's see. What's up next on our agenda? We will go to the consent calendar. And I lost my agenda. The consent agenda, our items are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion and one vote. There will be no separate discussion of consent agenda unless council votes to remove an item for an individual discussion. Ordinances on the consent agenda are for introduction only and will not be removed for any discussion. So council on consent agenda, you have two items, A, the approval of minutes, and B, a contract over $100,000. Is there any questions on the consent agenda? Okay. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve consent agenda items 4A and 4B, please. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion is made by Councilman Rivero. 
Second by Council Member Hendricks. Please vote when prompted to do so. And the consent agenda passes unanimously. First up is ordinances tonight, ordinance number 9.339 on second reading. And I believe we have Michael Grabcheck here with us. And so this is a bill for an ordinance approving an, the agreement design, sorry, the agreement regarding design and construction of the drainage and flood control improvements for Newland Gulch at Recreation Drive. Agreement number 21-0523, project number 108-504, buy-in between the Urban Drainage and Flood Control District, doing business as Mile High Flood District and the Town of Parker. You're getting these long titles, sir. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a mouthful. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, council members. Um, this ordinance is to provide an I or to approve an IGA between the town, Douglas County, and the Mile High Flood District to fund a drainage way improvement project along Newland Gulch adjacent to Recreation Drive. First reading of this uh, ordinance occurred on July 19th and second reading was continued from the August 2nd meeting um, due to some minor concerns the county had regarding the IGA language. This project is located within both the town of Parker and Douglas County and as such will be a collaborative effort between the two jurisdictions uh, with additional support and funding from the Mile High Flood District. Uh, more specifically, this project reach is along Newland Gulch from Lincoln Avenue to a point 1,400 feet downstream. Although this project corridor, corridor is primarily within Challenger Park, uh, the project reach currently impacts secondary access to Parker Recreation Center, regional uh, trail access nearby Challenger Park Estates, uh, and commercial traffic from the crossing at Stonegate Shopping Center. Uh, this reach of Newland Gulch, as it currently exists, pose, uh, poses several concerns for town, facilities, and citizens. Uh, first, the Texas-style crossing of Newland Gulch is the only such crossing type located within the entirety of the town. Uh, this type of roadway crossing does not utilize any culverts and conveys all flows over top the roadway. Uh, due to safety concerns and past incidents of stalled vehicles being pulled out from this crossing, um, Town staff manually gates off the roadway whenever flows exceed seven inches of depth. Additionally, this reach of Newland Gulch has a wide and expansive 100-year floodplain, which impacts many adjacent structures and accessibility of the immediate area. Uh, the adjacent parking lot frequently floods during minor storm events due to poor conveyance capacity of this reach. Finally, this reach degrades the water quality of Cherry Creek by directly connecting to common roadway pollutants such as oil and other vehicle fluids, trash, and asphalt chippings directly to Cherry Creek. So this uh, next slide here um, is what's called a, a rating curve um, that was developed for the flasher system that currently is uh, located at the Recreation Drive crossing. Um, so this chart basically shows you the depth of the water over the crossing um, as the flows increase. Um, and then you'll notice along the chart there are a few um, points there that show two year, five year, 10 year. Uh, those are different storm intervals um, as we calculate them. Um, so when I talk about minor storm events, I'm generally talking about the two and five year storm events. Um, those are frequent occurrence um, in, in the eyes of uh, infrastructure uh, design. Um, so as you can see from the chart, even just a two year storm um, incurs a water surface or a water uh, depth of two and a half feet over that crossing, which as you can imagine can get a little bit dangerous. And that's just a two year event. So as you go up, Five-year event, you're looking at three feet, 25, which we've had a couple of in, in isolated sections of uh, the town here just this year. Um, so not across the whole town, but in small pockets, we've had some 25-year events. Um, so you're looking at a flow of over four feet of depth. Um, so as you uh, may recall, Recreation Drive is closed by town staff for flows over seven inches of depth. Um, so this historically occurs about five to 10 times a year, uh, primarily within like a five, six month time frame, the spring, summer, early, early fall. Um, each closer, closure lasts about 24 to 48 hours. Um, 
This project seeks to achieve the following goals, uh, to install culverts at the stream crossing of Recreation Drive, uh, to reduce or eliminate the need of, uh, ro for road closures by town staff, uh, to improve the channel capacity in order, in order to minimize the localized and 100-year flooding, to optimize the low flow channel and mitigate areas of standing water, and to look for feasible ways to, contribute, uh, to treat contributing roadway pollutants and improve the water quality of Cherry Creek. Um, so before going into the project schedule and budget, uh, I want to mention again that this, is a, this project will be a collaborative effort between the town, Douglas County, and the Mile High Flood District. Um, although the county was not able to provide funding in 2021, uh, it is intended that this IGA will be amended in the future to bring in design and also eventually construction fund, funds from the county. Um, total project funding will be secured over multiple years. Uh, based on the above uh, funding strategy, the schedule of this project will be dependent on the findings of the conceptual design um, and associated construction costs. Um, conceptual design is anticipated to begin uh, here at the very, very end of 2021, this fourth quarter, and into 2022. Um, and then, sorry, and final design and permitting is anticipated to begin in 2022, um, and the construction schedule will be determined once conceptual design is, uh, and the approach is agreed upon by all parties. Uh, the funding initially proposed with this IGA consists of $100,000 contributions from each the town and the Mile High Flood District. Uh, the conceptual design and cost estimates um, for getting this started are anticipated to only cost approximately $50,000 with the uh, town contributing half that cost. Um, but the remaining funds will be contributed towards final design and construction. Um, as I had mentioned before, it's going to be a phased funding approach. Um, as such, staff recommends approval of Ordinance 9.339. Great. Council will go to staff for questions uh, before we open it for public comment. We'll start to my left, Council Member Hefta. Yeah, um, have, just, just historically speaking, mm -hmm. have you had some experience when those depths have reached four feet and what the effect of happened when you didn't have an adequate system in place? Um, yes, yeah, so uh, by any chance, uh, on that last slide, I do have a photo from uh, the 2013 floods. Um, and this was an old photo I found in the offices that I scanned. Um, it's that one on the top left there. It, it's hard to tell at this scale, and I have the actual photos. Um, but you can see, luckily, a lot of the adjacent land is, is park, you know, sports fields and those sort of um, amenities. So they're not in use generally during these types of storms. Um, but you can see the just expansive wide amount of flooding. Um, and while it gets very deep in the center of the crossing, you know, it starts to become shallower as it goes out. So on the edges, it isn't quite as dangerous as it is as you continue to go towards the middle of the, of the stream. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilman Barrington. Um, yeah, I've, I've experienced that flooding. I've seen it. So, um, and just for clarification, could you, mm -hmm. so, I know that there's some confusion when you hear the term 100 year flood. And so it's not that you, there's a chance it might happen every 100 years. Isn't it something like it's 1% chance of occurring it, in any given year? Exactly, exactly. Um, so it's kind of a statistical um, uh, look at storm events. So we call it the 100 year storm event because there's a 1% chance every year or one 100% chance every 100 years, just statistically speaking. Um, so yes, it is very possible to receive multiple 100-year storm events in a single year. Um, like I had mentioned before, we have had intensities uh, close to, you know, 75, getting close to 100-year storm events um, in the town this year, but they're very um, uh, smaller pockets, and so the, the effects don't ripple. Um, you're looking at more minor localized flooding, um, and the, the durations of these storms were very short. Um, so that also helped us out a lot. Thank you. Councilmember Dyack. No questions. Councilmember Hendricks. Uh, being a Texan, I was wondering what is a Texas style road? Well, it's uh, funny you say that. I'm actually a, a Texan myself. Um, so as you can imagine, there's lots and lots of rural country in Texas. Um, and so these kinds of crossings are very cheap. Um, and especially if they're not being used very often, they're very effective. Um, and so you see them, and I think they're kind of popularized in Texas, um, is, is my understanding. Okay, so no cowboys or anything. All right. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> there's a joke, like two Texans walking to town hall. Anyways, yes. Councilmember Pogue. 
Yeah, as I was one of the ones that were the original builders of the Challenger Park uh -huh. with Douglas County. Um, I know why that was put in there. But at the same time, I love Texas crossings. I love to go right through them. And our last 100-year flood was in the 1960s along Cherry Creek. But what I really want to ask you is tell me the design concept that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Are you looking at a large bridge? You're just raising a slight elevation and going over with culverts. What are you looking at? So um, our original kind of uh, design approach is going to be just like you said, the second option where we're looking at, going to look at raising the roads and adding some culverts underneath. Um, I think we would be uh, all for a different approach like a, a bridge and we're we're hopeful that maybe some creative solutions will present themselves, um, but essentially we're going to end up being, you know, cost limited on this project because of the use of the road. Um, you know, we don't want to sink too much funds into it, um, even though. Um, I guess what I'm getting at is a bridge is going to be very expensive, um, and culverts appear to be the cheapest solution, and then also raising the roadway elevations kind of around the gulch as well to kind of create a little bit of a, a levee, essentially. Um, but culvert crossing seems to be the yeah, logical approach. Yeah, and they've approach. cured the Texas crossing on Jordan Road that way. They've mm -hmm. also cured the one that existed on Peoria mm -hmm. near the Cherry Creek. Oh, so, excellent. and right now they're fairly... They're not obtrusive at all. You really don't notice what's going on, and that's what I was hoping you were going to do. Yes, yeah. I think we're going to look at minimizing our impact and, and just trying to find the most cost-effective solution to, to get the flow underneath instead of over. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Rivera. Thank you. Um, so looking at the picture from 2013, I mean, obviously addressing the flows and addressing you know the, the cuts and everything else has been going on there, um, and even the hindrance that the road is. Are there other issues that could pop up? I mean, are we moving, or is water being, is the county moving water off the parking lot in an efficient way, or are we getting pooling that's that's prolonging, or? Yes, um, so essentially there is a downstream constriction um, caused by one of the drop structures kind of north of Challenger Park, um, and there is a major high pressure gas line that crosses <laughs> at that location. Um, and so that is what's causing the elevation to be very shallow. Um, it it kind of has raised up the elevation. We weren't able to lower it a bunch. Once you get past that, the drop in the channel increases significantly, and we have a number of check structures. Um, so the vertical distance from Cherry or from yeah to Cherry Creek is pretty substantial once you get past that little constriction. Um, so we're not really moving the problem downstream. Okay. We're just trying to move it past that constriction so that way it gets back to flowing. Excellent. Well. Thank you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, we will open it up for public comment then at 727. Anyone wishing to make public comment on this ordinance? Please come up. Danette, do we have anybody online? No public comments. All right, then we will bring it back to the council at 728 for uh, opinions, comments, debate. We'll uh, start with Councilmember Dyack. Uh, I concur with Councilmember Pogue. I, I love Texas style crossings. Um, being a long time uh, resident here, um, the key is to get there before they close the Texas style crossing so you can have or you some get stuck fun. In the middle. <laughs> yeah, you can you can do whatever. So uh, dis disappointed, but um, understand progress is, is necessary. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Barrington. <laughs> Tough act to follow there, but I was not familiar with uh, the term Texas road crossing. So um, but I, I definitely uh, agree that this is um, can be dangerous and I think that this falls in line with our strategic goals and it promotes a safe and healthy community. Excellent. Councilmember Hefta? Yeah, um, thank you Michael for for um, the IGA with the Town of Parker and the Mile, Mile High Flood District and hopefully um, like you said in future years we could get some county money as well. Thank you. Councilmember Hendricks? No, I'm, I, I've driven that during storms too, and I've definitely uh, uh, have been yelling "yeehaw." I was but, supposed to drive it down uh, storms, Texan. <laughs> I, I approve of this project. Councilmember Pogue, uh, you've got my comment, right. so I don't have any. Councilmember Rivera, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is much needed. It's it's definitely been identified in the system, and and it's a been a long time coming. I'm glad the dollars have been found. I I am apprehensive because I'm afraid it might open a little can. Um, and, and, and we'll see, you know, hopefully there'll be some big partnership from the county and, and, and Mahai will step up. But uh, 
Um, obviously, the, the flows are, are scary. The, res the restriction of flow there creates a, a nightmare. But um, I'm glad it's, it's you know overall it's, it's going to improve water quality in the Cherry Creek, which is, is my charge on that board. So well done. Yep. I'll entertain a motion on ordinance number 9.339. I move to approve. Oops. I move to approve ordinance number 9.339 on second read. I'll second. Motion was made by Council Member Hendricks, seconded by Council Member Barrington. Please vote. And that ordinance passes unanimously. Next up is ordinance number 9.332 on second reading. And this has a request to be continued to October 18th, 2021. So council will entertain a motion. Uh, <clears throat> I move to approve, um, to, I move to <laughs> continue, please. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I really wanted to approve it tonight. I, I second. really wanted to approve it tonight. Motion was made by Councilmember Rivero, seconded by Councilmember Hendricks to move this to a date certain of October 18th, 2021. Please vote when prompted to do so. <laughs> and that motion passes unanimously. Next up is ordinance number 12.03.6 on second reading, a bill for an ordinance to amend chapter 12.02 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning electric powered vehicle, I'm sorry, electric powered wheel devices, trail speeds, and other updates. Jamie Wins here. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I know we had some discussion about this during a study session, but we are here to follow up on that prior discussion. I do have representatives from the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Department as well if there are additional questions. But the Town of Parker has gone into intensive studies about the usage of our trail system, and those studies that the Parks Department conducted have come to realize that our code is not consistent with the actual usage that is occurring on that trail system. So this is the first of two suggested ordinance amendments related to the use of our trail system for electric powered wheel devices, including e-bikes, which I think are at the forefront of most people's minds and whether or not they can use them on our trail system. Chapter 1202, which is specific to park regulations, is where we're making the majority of those changes, including some administrative updates, including the title of our director. Um, but we are asking town council to consider these updates to clarify what devices will be allowed on our parks trails. We've had discussion regarding electrical assisted bicycles and the three various classes. Based on research after our study session and review of both the state statute regarding this, other ordinances in the local municipalities and nationally, we've decided that the safest bet is for the town to continue to allow only class one and class two bikes on those trails. So the modifications are the same as we presented at that study session. Even though you cannot necessarily, upon view, determine what's a class three, we feel that it's up to our citizens to comply with the law and should they choose not to do so, that the consequences should be on them and not on the town. So therefore, the changes are consistent. We have also incorporated into our code updates that were passed to the Americans with Disabilities Act in 2011 to allow for personal mobility devices for individuals who have mobility disorders to clarify what is allowed there. So we hope that we have cleared up our code with what is allowed and complied with all of the regulations that we are required to federally. And I'm happy to answer any questions or if there's any additional information from our parks representatives. Mary, do you want to make a comment before we go to council questions or? Um, I, don't, I don't have anything additional to add to that okay. at this time. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, if there are any questions, I don't have to. Okay, we'll call on you. Great, so council staff questions. We'll start with council member Hendricks. I imagine we've seen a increase in e-bike and e vehicle uh, usage in town? <laughs> That's my understanding. Based on the review that was conducted by the Parks Department, not only is e-bikes usage up considerably, um, they've also received a number of questions, but there are other electric power devices such as the one wheels, the segways, that are be being utilized on the trail system as well. Thank you. I do want Mary to address that. Just in case. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. All right. I'm going to keep calling on you as soon as you make movements. Councilmember Pogue? Yeah, just as we discussed in the hall, 
Um, there had been a problem in the past with toddlers using their electric cars, tractors, whatever. Are you now allowing those because they're not clearly addressed here? I believe that those are addressed under the model traffic code still, and that has not been amended where those are not to be used on trails or roadways. Um, certainly, if there's a request to consider it further, we can absolutely do that. And the reason I find it confusing is because it says similar electric devices. It is a battery-operated device. It's just for a toddler. Correct. And I believe, and I can look through the model traffic code, I believe it, they are, toy vehicles are specifically defined under the model traffic code. And since we only modified a few definitions specific to this section, we have not modified that one. Maybe we should in the future. We can certainly look at that. Absolutely. Councilman Rivero? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Dyack? No questions. Councilman Barrington? Just curious um, if the, the speed limit is going to be 15 Miles Correct. Miles per hour. Where, how many places will that be posted? Or is it just going to be at the, the trail heads? Or will it be? Yeah, the speed limit is currently posted throughout our trail system. Uh, if we feel the need for additional signage, we plan to do that. Um, in addition, a few times a year, we do get out there um, with enforcement and an educational campaign about trail etiquette and trail usage and the types of different vehicles on our trail system. So we plan to continue that and really in the spirit of transparency, trying to educate people a little bit more so on the usage of type one and two e-bikes on our trails now. They're fairly ubiquitous. It's probably at least 50% of the trail users on, on bicycles are e-bike users, so. And the 15 mile per hour speed limit was on the trail system was always included in the parks regulations, which were referred to in the code. The code previously only included parking areas and roadways within the parks areas. So we just added the trails to that 15 mile per hour definition to be consistent with the regulations. Thanks. Right. Council Member Hefta. Uh, yes, Jamie. Um, Thank you for your hard work on updating this, because it looks like it was quite a bit of work to update this ordinance. Thank you. So I would just draw anybody's attention that's really looking into this to the Parker Municipal Code. And it's, uh, in particular, if you want to look up the types of vehicles allowed on the trails, it's sections 12.02.210 through 12.02.230. And it also goes over um, some safety issues as well. So um, the safe operation of any type of vehicle on the trail as well um, in abiding by town rules and regulations. So I think that was a great addition that you went into the enforcement and the safety all in that chapter as well to explain to people when they're using this type of vehicle, they have to observe the safety precautions and they have to observe the speed limit. And just another note, I did see a unicycle the other day, <laughs> uni at the corner of, uh, by the CVS there on the corner of Jordan and Maine. And those, it, those do go fast. So if you, if you take your car and you think about what 15 miles an hour is, it's probably what you should be doing through your neighborhood on a regular basis, 15 miles an hour. Uh, to not run anybody down, but if you up that to 28 miles an hour, that's pretty fast. So I think the 15 mile an hour limit is is right in line with with this ordinance. Thank you. Yeah, and it's also consistent with other speed limit um, in other neighboring agencies and trail systems throughout um, the the Denver area in general. So you'll see that posted on most trail systems, 15 miles per hour speed limit. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, we will open up public comment to this at 7.39. Um, anybody in the room wishing to make public comment on this ordinance? See none. Danette, do we have anybody on Zoom? Um, no comments. All right, then we'll bring it back to the council for uh, any debate, comments, opinions, and I'll start, I'll go in reverse order, so council member have to. No, nope. thank you for your hard work, uh, both Mary and, and Jamie on this. All right. Councilman Barrington? Yeah, I think that it definitely, so 1989 was when this was originally passed. And so, I mean, everything has changed a lot since then. So I think it was definitely, there's, there's a need for an update. And I, yeah, I support this for sure. 
Great. Councilman Dyack. Yeah, no, I, I think, um, you know, with the information that we received in study session, uh, it seems as though this is a very emerging uh, trend and our uh, other regional communities are um, uh, being receptive and we're kind of taking their lead. Uh, I, I just want to make sure that um, we continue to monitor because I, I don't want to create issues with um, those, those people who are walking, running, or using their bikes. And, you know, obviously we have an equestrian uh, presence here too. So to me, I want to be sensitive to what we're already doing um, and just uh, continue to monitor as we bring this, this new feature onto our trails. Thank Excellent. You. Councilman Hendricks. Uh, no questions, just thank you for your work. Yeah. Councilman Pogue? Yeah, I remember, I uh, agree with Councilmember Dyack because we do have multiple types of users on here and even bikes speed and they create problems. So I think we're gonna have continued enforcement problems there, but hopefully our public will understand what and why. So thank you, but it is an emergent trend. I mean, half of my kids own them. <laughs> Councilman Rivera. <clears throat> yeah, I, I uh, <clears throat> identify definitely with the trend. Um, it might hurt my pride a little bit when I get past. Um, that's all right, I consider it motivation. <laughs> and I know there's definitely uh, you know, some folks that, that wanna see a definite delineation between electric bikes and bikes, and maybe not so much on the cement trails, but definitely on the mountain trails and the dirt trails. They do, they do cause and do some wear. Um, but here, I see an opportunity. Um, you know, we, we definitely have an, a, the ability to get more folks out and we're already a very healthy community and very healthy county, very healthy state. Um, this opportunity is, 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 I think, welcomed by the community and, and they've, they've shown that already. And I would, I would much rather enforce through education than I would penalize for somebody having to break the law because they wanted to ride a bike at 60 years old. So I, I think this is a good move. I think this is a smart move. And, and I think maybe in a roundabout way, we can even uh, limit some traffic on the roads by getting people to use our trail system. So well done. All right, Council, I will entertain a motion on Ordinance 12.03.6. I move to approve Ordinance number 12.03.6 on second reading, Mr. Mayor. I'll second. Motion is made by Councilmember Rivero, second by Councilmember Barrington. Please vote when prompted to do so. And that ordinance passes unanimously. Next up is ordinance number 5.03.8 on second reading, a bill for an ordinance to amend chapter 7.01 of the town of Parker Municipal Code concerning electric personal assistive motor vehicles. You're getting all the motorized stuff tonight, Jamie. All about the motorized stuff. All right. And this is to be consistent with the last ordinance that we admitted to council. Uh, this is our model traffic code adoption ordinance where the model traffic code provisions were incorporated into the town of Parker Municipal Code. We have made various amendments throughout the years, but one of the provisions previously in the model traffic code stated that electric personal assistive mobility devices or EPAMDs shall not be operated on bike trails. Uh, since the other section of our code is now allowing for that, we are just asking to include an amendment to the model traffic code to allow the operation of EPAMDs on bikes or pedestrian paths to be consistent with our code and to allow them to be at a speed at 15 miles per hour the, on town trails, uh, the code, the model traffic code otherwise only allows them to travel at a speed of 12 and one half miles per hour, which we're not sure about that half, but that's what they have. So <laughs> we are asking that council approve this amendment to the model traffic code to be consistent. All right, I'm gonna start to my left this time. Councilman Dyack, any questions for staff? Um, no, I think, uh, again, a continuation of what we just uh, were discussing. So I think I'm okay, appreciate okay. it. Councilman Barrington. No questions. Okay. Councilmember Hefta? No questions. Okay. Councilman Rivero? No questions. Councilmember Pogue? Yes. Okay. S section three? Correct. You talk about subsection 117, th paragraph three of the model traffic code is modified to read as follows. And it says that it, the device shall not be operated. And then you go on to uh, clarify on a bike or pedestrian path and I find that in conflict, conflict with what we just passed. 
Can and you it, explain? It says on a bike or pedestrian path in a manner inconsistent with any code sections. So even though the language is somewhat odd, it does allow them to be operated pr pursuant to the other provisions in our code. Yeah, because that really creates the wheels a turn and like, what are you really trying to tell me here? And it's just to specify that they shall comply with the rules under section D of what we passed under chapter seven. Uh, it is our 1202.210 section D. It lays out all of the provisions that they need to comply with to utilize an EPAMD on our trails. So this is just saying that they need to comply with all of those provisions. And this would also include streets or not? It allows for operation on a limited access highway. Uh, other provisions of the EPAMDs would be consistent with how the model traffic code already lays them out. Okay, thank you. Councilman Hendricks? All right, we'll go to public comment. Anybody in the room? You make a public comment? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> anybody in the room wishing to make a public comment? Danette, do we have anybody on Zoom? Um, no public comments on Zoom, Mayor. All right, Council will come back and I'll do the same order. Councilman Dyack, any? Thoughts? Opinions? No, sir. Councilman Barrington? I think any time we can get more people out of the house and out from in front of the news, <laughs> I would support this. Amen to that. <laughs> Councilmember have to anything? Yeah, those, those um, motorized vehicles can go 15 miles an hour, and they are, and people that need them. Um, for various reasons, they're they're a great help to people that have disabilities, um, injuries, and so allowing this is 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 very helpful. Great, Councilman Rivera. <clears throat> no further comments, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Polk. No further comments. Councilman Dern. All right. If that, I'll entertain a motion on Ordinance 5.03.8. I move to approve Ordinance Number 5.03.8 on second reading. Nice second. Motion was made by Councilmember Barrington, seconded by Councilmember Hefta. Please vote when prompted to do so. <coughs> and that ordinance passes unanimously. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. All right, up next is uh, Stacy Nerger on resolution number 21-037, a resolution to exempt amendments to the Civic Center filing number one, First Amendment, subdivision exemption plat from the definition of subdivision and subdivided land as contained in the Town of Parker Land Development Ordinance. Got the longest title tonight so far. I like it. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. So this evening, the Town of Parker is requesting an exemption plat to create two lots on 3.184 acres. So the site is located at the southeast corner of Main Street and Pine Drive. The proposed Civic Center filing number one, second amendment, exemption plat would replat the existing vacant land and parking lot used for the Pace Center. The existing parking lot and parking lot landscaping would be platted as lot 2B and would consist of a total of 1.766 acres. The existing vacant land would be platted as lot 2A and would consist of 1.418 acres. On July 20th, 2009, Town Council approved the Civic Center filing number one exemption plat, which platted the Berry property, the White property, and the Hind tracks as a Civic Center property and decided, divided the Civic Center property into two lots and one track to provide in part for the financing and construction of the Pace Center. The Pace Center is located on Lot 1, while the parking lot is located on Lot 2. These lots were created due to Pikes Peak bisecting the site in half. In 2010, Town Council approved the Civic Center filing number 1 First Amendment exemption plat, which provided additional right-of-way and utility easements on the property, as well as named the Eastern Road to Pace Center Drive. And those are highlighted in yellow. <clears throat> So under section 13.07.020H of the Parker Municipal Code, the town council is authorized to approve the proposed second amendment as an exemption plat, which means the town council can approve the plat without a public hearing. An exemption plat is used by the town for platting town owned properties. Therefore, tonight staff is recommending that town council approve resolution number 21-037. This concludes staff's presentation and I'm available for any questions you may have. 
All right, council will have questions for staff on the exemption plat. So remember, we're, we've got we've got further conversations we're going to have on what we do after we subdivide. This is just the question on the subdivision. So I'll start to my right with Councilman Hendricks. Uh, no questions, thank you. Councilmember Polk. No th questions, thank okay. you. Councilmember Vero. No questions, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Dyack. No questions. Councilmember Barrington. No questions. Councilmember Council Hefta. Yeah, the exemption plot. Just a little bit more information on that, if you will, just to go over uh, that definition. So what an exemption plot is. So an exemption plot is actually a plot that's excluded from the subdivision regulations. What that means is we're still looking at the plot. Does it meet the town code? Is the lot size is sufficient to meet the code, the land development ordinance, the zoning on the property, those sort of things. But it doesn't require a public hearing. Like a minor development plot would... Um, or final plots, those sort of things. And so it allows us to take it before you guys as an, a resolution. Right, Be, and specifically because it's town-owned property. We use exemption plots specifically for town-owned property. Correct. And no other type of property? Typically not. Right. Is there any leeway for any other type of property on that? If, if you read the town code, the land development ordinance, it defines what can and can't be used as an exemption plot. And I believe in the town code, and Jim Maloney may correct me if I'm wrong, it does specifically say town-owned property. It has to be in a public interest, and in public interest, at least how uh, council has defined it over uh, many, many years, is that um, it would only apply to public property. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and open this for public comment at 751. Anyone in the audience wishing to make a statement on this? Danette on Zoom. Um, there are no public comments. All right, we'll come back to the council then for thoughts, debate, questions. Councilmember Hendricks? Councilmember no. Poe? Councilmember Vero? No comments, sir. Councilmember Dyack? Yeah, um, this, this is sort of a continuation. Um, there was a citizen um, based initiative that, um, quite honestly, we, we were just trying to um, identify that we were not going to sell the parking in the My Main Street concept. And uh, we're, we're trying to use this to, uh, to kind of make good on that commitment. We, we never, the previous council never um, desired to, uh, to sell the pace parking. So we, we by this um, action, can um, define the parking as lot 2B and uh, the available parcel for something undefined to be lot 2A. So hopefully, this kind of clarifies that unanswered question that Councilmember Rivera and myself, when we met with uh, the citizen-led uh, initiatives leadership, uh, brought forward. And um, promises made, promises kept. Thank you. Councilmember Barrington. Thank you for clarifying that. Councilmember Dyack, no comments. Great. And Councilmember Hefta. No, thank you, Councilmember Dyack, for clarifying, that, for clarifying that and your historical knowledge on this issue with Councilmember Rivero. All right. If there's nothing else, we'll go for a motion on resolution oh, number 21. Mr. Mayor, oh, I'm I sorry. move I'm sorry. Oh, to approve ahead. resolution number 21-037. All right. I, I second. Motion was made by Councilmember Polk, seconded by Councilmember Hefta. Please vote when prompted to do so. And that resolution passes unanimously. Resolution number 21-037, a resolution to consent to the assignment and assumption agreement by and between Layla Peasley Residuary Trust and Howard R. Peasley and Plaza Street Partners, LLC, and the assignment and assumption agreement by and between Plaza Street Partners, LLC, and Plaza Street Fund 106, LLC. Mr. Maloney. Good evening, Mayor and Council. That's a rather long title to you solve. You got the a longest one to solve a very simple problem. So what happened here is uh, council annex property we commonly refer to as the Lincoln Professional Park property and that happened on May 17th, 2021. So you approved the annexation ordinance, the zoning ordinance and an annexation agreement. And what happened here, this is a situation where we have a property owner that wants to sell to a developer and the property owner doesn't want to be responsible for the financial obligations contained in the annexation agreement. 
So the way we work it is we identify the order of recordation in the annexation agreement to let the original property owner off the hook. Well, unfortunately, uh, there was two sets of lawyers working on this transaction, one handling the land use and another handling the real estate. And something got lost in the communication and the documents were not recorded in the proper order. The proper order would have been the recordation of the annexation documents first, followed by the closing documents. Well, that didn't happen, so the way we have to fix it is you need to consent to two assignment assumption agreements with the effect of releasing the original property owner, the Peasleys, uh, from any obligation under the annexation agreement since they're not going to be developing this property, and then putting the burden on Plaza Street Fund 106 LLC, uh, which will be the ultimate developer of the property and the owner of the property and thus responsible for uh, completing the obligations under the agreement. So the reason there's two assignment assumption agreements is that the Peasley sold to Plaza Street Partners LLC, who in turn created a, uh, a single-purpose uh, entity called Plaza Street Fund 106, which is the current property owner. So you have two assignment assumption agreements, and uh, my recommendation is to fix this error would be to consent to both assignment assumption agreements. Excellent. Council Is questions, that we'll start with. Really confusing? Not at all. Are you ready for questions? Yes, sir. All right, Council Mayor Hefta. Uh, Mr. Maloney, did you ever get to the root of how this era occurred um, with these individuals? Again, there was two two groups of attorneys yeah. representing the transaction. Uh, one group handled the land use piece, and the other group handled the real estate. And I'm not sure they're both located in the same state. So the uh, local firm handled the land use, and the out-of-state firm handled the real estate. And they didn't talk to each other. Uh, had the real estate lawyers read the annexation agreement, they would have seen that there was language in there specifying the order of recordation. Uh, so something got lost in the translation, and, and this is the way to fix it. Great. Thank you. Sure. Councilmember Barrington, any questions? No questions. Councilmember Dyack? Clear as mud. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Hendricks? No questions. Councilmember Polk? Yeah, this is really trying to solve a problem for the Peasleys, right? Correct. So, yeah, the fact that this error in timing and recordation between attorneys is not the first time this kind of thing happens, so. That's correct, we, yeah. we caught it, and this is the, the fix. Thank you to you sure. for doing that. Sure. Councilman Rivera, any questions? Thank you, Jim, just for the record, the, the fault did not lie within town attorneys. These are outside firms working on behalf of the purchaser, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Excellent, all right, we will open it for public comment at 757. Anyone wishing to make a comment on this item? Danette, do we have anybody online? Um, if you'd like to make a comment, please raise your hand in Zoom. No comments, Mayor. All right, we'll come back and we'll do reverse order. Council Rivera, any comments or any? No, I, I, again, kudos to staff for catching this. And in and, and, and my opinion, if, if we can help the Peasleys, um, you know, uh, Parker family, I, I, anything we can do, by all means. Excellent. Councilman Pope? For the question. Councilman Hendricks? Oh. Councilman Dyack? No, sir. Councilman Barrington? I, if, uh, a deed is just a piece of paper until it's recorded. And I, I can see how things like this, as long as there's humans involved, there will be some human error. But it sounds like it's a pretty easy fix, and so thank you for catching that. Yep, so, Council Member Hefta. Yeah, I have some sympathy for my fellow attorneys because sometimes your eyes get tired from looking at all these documents. But great catch, Jim, to you and your staff for for finding the error and then bringing it to our attention. Excellent. I'll entertain a motion on resolution number 21-038. I move to approve resolution number 21-038, please. I second. Motion was made by Councilmember Rivero, seconded by Councilmember Hendricks. Please vote when prompted to do so. And that resolution passes unanimously. All right, before we get to the next item on a public hearing, which is a 
uh, hearing on a metropolitan district. I have a statement to read in for the record. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a public hearing for town council's consideration of a service plan and related items for the Newland Crossing Metropolitan District, which is a residential metropolitan district. On June 15th, 2020, the town council found that a conflict of interest existed for council member Pogue that precludes her from participating in any public hearing that involves a residential metropolitan district service plan or amendment to the service plan. So at this time, uh, we'll pause the meeting so council member Pogue may leave the council chambers before we open up the public hearing on this. Okie doke. Is that so the end? So you get an early night. Yeah, this is it. That's it, yeah. Good night. <laughs> See you later. A blessing in disguise, right? I'll, I'll take it out. I'm going to go that way. Okay. Thanks. And I just want to clarify to the public, my reasons are because I refuse to support mill levies at the current levels to be forced against a new property owner. And I refuse to support that, so therefore I'm declared in conflict of interest. Thanks, Cheryl. Appreciate yep. it. All right, on to public hearing. So I will go ahead and open up the public hearing at 8 p 8.01 p.m. on uh, the Newland Crossing Metropolitan District. We have two items here is resolution number 21-039 and ordinance.9.340, both on second reading. Good evening, Chris Mayor and Council. Uh, I am here to introduce the two items related to the proposed Newland Crossing Metropolitan District, a resolution that approves the service plan, and then an ordinance that approves the intergovernmental agreement, which is required by the service plan, uh, related um, primarily to how the mill levies are going to be utilized. Uh, this is a... Um, 86 acre parcel located at the northeast corner of Main Street and Chambers. It is going to be an all residential project. Uh, we do have here with me tonight Megan Murphy from the law firm of White Bear, Ankley, Tanaka, and Waldron. She's representing the proposed district. She has a very comprehensive presentation for you. So I, rather than going through the material and then having her repeat it, I'm going to turn it over to her and then we'll both answer questions from the council after she does that presentation. That sounds that, perfectly okay? fine. Yep. So if you will come down, no, come on down. State your name and address for the record. Good evening, Mayor, Council Member, Megan Murphy, 15834 East Otero Avenue, Centennial, 80112. Excellent. Do I need to do this? Yeah. It's great to be before <laughs> you this evening. Thank you for your time. Uh, where should I look for next slide? Today. Right over here. Thank you so much. There we are, thank you. This shows the vicinity map for where the project is located. This is proposed to be a residential development by Lennar Homes. Next slide. Some background information. The Town of Parker has a model service plan. This service plan complies with your model service plan and I'll highlight any changes. Next slide. Here's some key terms. The maximum debt limit we're asking for is based on the formula in your model service plan. We are proposing significantly less mills for debt than your model service plan, and the next two slides will explain why. The maximum O&M mill levy is based on the number of units. We're less than 400 units, that's five mills. Five mills for infrastructure, five mills to the town. Next slide. Okay, here shows the overlapping mill levy for Newland Crossing. This is a unique project because it's located within the boundaries of an existing metropolitan district, Stonegate, which is the third from the bottom mill levy, levying 28 mills. So what we're trying to do with this proposed service plan is bring the mill levy down for debt service to keep it competitive with other projects you've approved in Parker, like trails at Crowfoot. So you'll see a total tax mill levy in Newland Crossing of 162. If you go to the next slide, 
for the Trails at Crowfoot project, it's 157, but you'll notice the Metro District Mill Levy is significantly higher than Newland at 59 compared to 77, which is approximately $184 a year in property taxes for a $500,000 home. So we are organizing a metro district in a metro district, but it's providing different services. And in order to maintain the best interest of residents living in that district, we're voluntarily lowering the mill levy so they will pay less taxes. I just wanna pause for a second in case there's questions on that specific concept. Yep. We'll hold questions till the end of your presentation. Oh, okay. Then you can vote. Yep. Next slide. What are we going to do with the mill levy? This first one is the operations and maintenance mill levy. We work with town staff and town attorney to identify improvements that are eligible for maintenance by the district, including drainage improvements. Without the district, these improvements wouldn't be built and they wouldn't be maintained. Next slide. Here's the infrastructure capital. This is often called your regional mill levy. This goes to improvements that benefit not only Newland, but surrounding projects such as Newland Gulch, Chambers Road, and East Main Street. Next slide. Here's the town capital maintenance mill levy. This mill levy is imposed and is given to the town to maintain items that the town staff helps us identify, such as roadways, storm sewer, regional roadways, detention ponds, all those items lift, listed there. Next slide. Here are many slides that go through the specific approval criteria that is required to be found by the town council tonight in order to approve the service plan. These are also included in a letter that was included in your packet. I don't want to drag this on longer than you want to be here, so I'm happy to read through each of these items, or I'm happy to say here are the items in the letter in my presentation. Seeing some next slide faces. Answer. I think we'll be a couple next slides here. I think we got one more, maybe two. Oh, two more. Okay, here we are. So what are some benefits of approving the service plan tonight? It's necessary for Lennar to develop the property. It's somewhat of a infill tract in the town of Parker that could be filled with residential improvements if the service plan was approved. Also has the benefits of regional mills and town mills. That is the end of the show. Excellent. Council, we will uh, entertain questions now of both the applicant and uh, Kristen, if you have any. So I'll start to my right over here with Councilman Rivero. Thank you. I'm sorry. Could you tell me your name again? Megan Murphy. Thank you, Megan. Could you address, if we are getting, or if you are getting less mills, is there a hindrance towards the quality of the infrastructure going in? Where did you find those dollars? What did, what did we do to, what did you do in your budget to, to make this work, if you don't mind sharing. Not, not at all, sir. I'm standing up here alone, but never working alone. So we worked with CVL engineers on the cost estimate. And for a project of this size, um, Parker is not unique, but one of a few jurisdictions that has a debt limit formula that gives us a lot more debt than we need in this case. So we only have about $8 million in public improvements. And your formula gives us about $21 million in debt authorization based on the 39 mills, so we're lucky to have a gap already. So it wasn't me. CVL says the project can paper, and those are the improvements that are required as reviewed by town staff. Perfect. Thank you for that answer. Councilman Hendricks? No questions. Councilman Derek? Uh, nothing. Thank you. Councilman Barrington? Questions. Councilman Rafta? Yes, so Derek, I know, but <laughs> I don't really have a question as much as I wanted to define mill comes from the Latin word millesium meaning thousand as used in property tax one mill is equal to one dollar a property tax levied per thousand dollars of a property's assessed value so my point being that so many people are asking what is a mill levy where did this come from and why is it so high and what does it go towards what what is this and just, you know, you, you really gave a great presentation when you went over that it goes to drainage and street improvements and traffic and open space. That's where your money is going in a community. When a community develops, it has to develop with that money 
in there, and that money's got to come from somewhere. So it comes from the mill levy. And so uh, thank you for a very good explanation of that in your presentation. Thank you. Great, thanks. Anyone questions for Kristen at all? Okay. All right, then we are going to open this up for public comment at 8.09. Anyone in the room wishing to make a public comment on the service plan? Seeing none, did not, do we have anybody else? There are no public comments online. Okay, and so then there's nothing for you all to address from the applicant. So I'm going to get and close the hearing at 8.09 p.m. and come back to the council uh, for any discussion or uh, a re review of the evidence. So I'll start. Councilman Rivero. Thank you. I uh, uh, truly appreciate um, both your stewardship and your presentation tonight. An outstanding organization. Um, I look forward to some, some new members living in a quality um, quality neighborhood. Um, I find that you adequately addressed our criteria in your responses, and I find that this plan complies with our model service plan. Thank you very much. Councilmember Hendricks? I concur with Councilmember Rivero's words. Thank you. Councilmember Dyack? No, thank Can you for the presentation. Councilmember Barrington? Thank you. Councilmember Hefta? Yeah, and I just wanted to point out one response um, in your uh, memo. The service plan includes the following protections that are in the best interest of future residents of the area proposed to be served. A capital mill levy of five mills, a maximum operation and maintenance mill levy of five mills, a maximum town capital and maintenance mill levy of five mills, a maximum debt mill levy of 39 mills, and a maximum debt mill levy imposition term of 40 years after the initial imposition of the maximum debt mill levy. And um, for your organization to bring the mill levy down for debt service in keeping with other developments in Parker is truly outstanding work. Um, so thank you very much. Great. Council, we have two items before you. First, I will entertain a motion on resolution number 21-039. I move to approve resolution number 21-039, please, Mr. Mayor. I'll second. Motion is made by Councilman Rivero, seconded by Councilmember Barrington. Please vote when prompted to do so. And that resolution passes unanimously. Uh, next up is ordinance number 9.340 for a motion. I move to approve ordinance number 9.340 on second reading. All second. Motion is made by Councilmember Barrington, seconded by Councilmember Hendricks. Please vote when prompted to do so. And that motion passed. Oh. Most passes unanimously. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you to your staff. They're always wonderful. Oh, great. That's good to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with no other business before the Parker Town Council, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion is made by Councilman Rivero, second by Councilmember Hendricks. Your last vote of the night. And we're adjourned at 8.13. Thank you. <laughs>